Jacob lifted his eyes and looked, and there Esau was coming, and with him were four hundred men. So he divided the children among Leah, Rachel, and the two maidservants. And he put the maidservants and their children in front, Leah and her children behind, and Rachel and Joseph last. Then he crossed over before them, and bowed himself to the ground seven times, until he came near to his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, and embraced him, and fell on his neck, and kissed him, and they wept. And he lifted his eyes, and saw the women and the children. Who are these with you? So he said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. Then the maidservants came near, they and their children, and bowed down. And Leah also came near with her children, and they bowed down. Afterward Joseph and Rachel came near, and they bowed down. Then Esau said, What do you mean by all this company which I met? And he said, These are to find favour in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. My name's Arthur. Thank you for joining me as we read Genesis chapter 33. Jacob was fearful that Esau, coming with 400 men, was going to take vengeance on him even though God had promised to be with him and had encouraged him. So he went forward with trepidation, but he is determined to go forward. This is the exercise of faith. He doesn't run away. Although he is scared out of his wits, his fear of God, his respect for God, overcomes his fear and he faces his brother. Well, his brother isn't coming with 400 men to attack him. He runs to meet him and embrace him. And he's scratching his head. Why all this fuss that Jacob has gone to? Here, as Jacob approaches him, he's bowed down seven times before his brother. He sent gifts ahead to his brother. He is honouring his brother. He is putting his brother first and himself last. And this, of course, is what the Lord Jesus teaches us. He who exalts himself shall be abased, but he who humbles himself shall be exalted. And so Jacob humbles himself before his brother. There is evidently a change from the day when he strove to steal from his brother, did not speak the truth. These 20 years that have passed have seen Jacob enter into his own relationship with God. Relying upon the promise of God and not thinking that he has to achieve things himself. And so he introduces his wives and his children to Esau, saying, These are the children whom God has graciously given your servant. For He fully understands that he left home with nothing and through the hard journey that he has travelled God has made him a wealthy man wealthy in the sense of a large family as well as livestock and servants to care for them. When Jacob first saw the Lord in the dream concerning the ladder he made the promise without prompting from God that he would give a tenth of his possession to the Lord. And so it crosses my mind that this gift that Jacob gives to Esau is at least part of that gift. He doesn't see it as a loss to himself because he has already promised to give a 10% to the Lord. Well, how do you give 10% to the Lord? You give it to others. The text here doesn't formally say that this gift was part of that 10%. And it may have well been in addition to the 10%. But Jacob is clearly recognising that the things that he has are from God. God has given them to him and he will acknowledge God in them. Well, continue reading from verse 8. Esau said, What do you mean by all the company which I met? And Jacob said, These are to find favour in the sight of my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. 
And Jacob said, No, please, if I have now found favour in your sight, then receive my present from my hand, inasmuch as I have seen your face, as though I had seen the face of God, and you were pleased with me. Please, take my blessing that is brought to you, which God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have enough. So he urged him, and he took it. So Esau says, I don't need your stuff. What do you mean by giving me all, all this livestock? He'd given hundreds of sheep, hundreds of goat, 40 cattle, 30 camels, 20 donkeys. I have enough. But Jacob's response now is, God has given this to me, and I have enough. And to show that God has been gracious and generous to me, I want to give it to you. He urged Esau to keep it, and his urgency exceeded Esau's reluctance. Again, it is a gift of reconciliation, and the fact that Esau would go home with some of Jacob's livestock would be a permanent reminder to Esau that Jacob had been friendly towards him, had been generous towards him. Now, Esau wants to be friendly with Jacob and proposes they travel together. For verse 12 says, Then Esau said, Let us take our journey, let us go, and I will go before you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows that the children are weak, and the flocks and herds which are nursing are with me. And if the men should drive them hard one day, all the flock will die. Please, let my Lord go on ahead before his servant. I will lead on slowly at a pace, which the livestock that go before me and the children are able to endure, until I come to my Lord in Seir. And Esau said, Well, let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, What need is there? Let me find favour in the sight of my Lord. So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. And Jacob journeyed to Succoth, built himself a house, and made booths for his livestock. Therefore the name of the place is called Succoth. And may the Lord bless these words to us. Now, Jacob is determined that while he would be on friendly relationships with Esau, he would not get mixed up with Esau again. There's always the struggle that the people of God have with the people of the world. We want to be on friendly and good relationships with them, but we do not want to just adopt the world's values and the world's ways. We want to seek God, His values and His ways. It was a great relief to Jacob to see Esau face to face in a friendly manner. And he says, it's like seeing God face to face. Well, he had just seen God face to face. The God who was the fear of Isaac had met him, and Jacob was still alive. And he had a limp to show that the Lord God of his father Abraham and of Isaac was stronger than he. And so he is committed to walking with God, even though there is fear in his heart about what this might be, and we'll see more fear coming into Jacob's life as he proceeds. Esau offers to help Jacob, but Jacob declines the offer. Esau was living in Mount Seir, south of the promised land. God had promised Jacob the land of Canaan. We see Jacob says to Esau that he would come to him in Mount Seir, yet it seems he has no intention at all of going to Mount Seir. Having met Esau, he promptly stops travelling south. He turns west, stopping first at Succoth and then crossing the Jordan and coming to Shechem, saying, no, I just want to press on my own way. And so we as God's people, we need to press on with God. And although others may want to help us, we need to be careful that we are not that in so doing, we do not begin to adopt their agenda. Jacob is a shepherd. He wants to care properly for his sheep, not press them by travelling too fast. 